What is going on everybody? Hope you're having a great start to November. So on this video, we're gonna talk about two reasons why I think the carnivore diet is the best diet for your brain. Really, we're gonna jump into the evidence, some backstory that I think really leads up to the reasons why. So the first reason that I think the carnivore diet is optimal, by far the best diet for your brain, is we evolved as carnivores. If you look at our evolutionary story, we sprung out of primates, monkeys, chimpanzees, millions of years ago. And what we think happened was actually quite interesting. So around 2 million years ago, the earth got cooler and the forests sort of turned to grassland and more scarce plants were around. 2 million years ago, Homo habilis started using stone for tools for food. And what we saw was that this form of the Homo genus, Homo species, we are Homo sapiens, obviously, there's Homo neanderthals, our most recent ancestors, Homo erectus, and then Homo habilis. These subsets of species, the Homo habilis being our earliest kind of ancestors in the Homo genus, started using tools, they started using stones as tools, and what we saw was that they were cracking into foods, they were cracking into leftover carcasses in the savanna, on, on the land that animals, that, that carnivores were leaving behind. So the theory here is that we evolved and we were able to use tools as Homo habilis and we were able to crack into brain skulls as well as bones for bone marrow and brain. And this fueled the evolutionary growth of the Homo genus and the brain which quadrupled in size as it branched out over the next million, million and a half years. We also saw the human, the genus of the homo species, the gut, get much more acidic. So from what you probably see now with typical primates around a 7 or 8 or 9 pH, humans are around a 1.5-ish pH, and when we consume protein, our stomachs get even more acidic. And carnivores can be anywhere from 1 to 3, but typically are 2 to 3. So the acidity in the gut what that indicates to us is that we were actually scavengers and that our guts needed to be very acidic to handle the, the dangerous potential bacteria that was left from the rotting flesh, the rotting fat, the rotting meat that we were eating. It doesn't sound sexy, but it seems that this was the case, that we were able to crack into these bones and these skulls, but we weren't big enough to actually hunt down these prey at the time. So we were these big scavengers, we were these scavenger species relying on this big, amount of food in our diet. So Homo halibus was only about four or five feet tall. It wasn't really that big. But what we saw was because we were eating these fat rich foods, marrow as well as brain, um, which were high in DHA and AA fatty acids, we saw our brain size just skyrocket. As our brains increased in size, our tools got better, and we also got to be a larger species as well, and we were able to actually hunt. There's actually some theory that our shoulders are built more for throwing objects as human beings than they are for actually hanging from trees and branches and plants. So we're actually, we have the structure to throw more so than we do for hanging. And this correlates with our ability to actually be more of a hunter. We also saw that our limbs got longer and uh, that we got a little bit more lean and more agile. And this kind of correlates with animals like wolves or, or carnivore, like felines, in the sense that our ability and our agility increased as a species, and we were able to be more nimble and actually be predatory towards animals. So if you buy this idea that we were these, these sort of subsets of primates that branched off learned how to make tools, but we're still kind of small, so we basically scavenged these animal foods because of the environment becoming much more sparse of plants that we could actually consume. Our, our colons basically went from three times the size they are now, relatively speaking, down to almost non-existent. And if you look at primates that we evolved from, they had much bigger intestinal tracts to ferment the fiber and generate fat from the plants that they were eating. If you look at our guts, our guts became much more acidic to handle the scavenged food that we were getting when we were in this situation and our, we traded our colons for larger brains and we basically 
uh, built the brains off of the nutrients because of the fats that we were hunting and scavenging and getting. Then we became more nimble, we became bigger, we evolved to basically throw and hunt and we were able to kind of get our own foods. So that's point one. And that's really one of the most powerful points of this whole thing is like, our brains evolved over about a million, million and a half years from this homo genus. We shrunk down our colons, our stomach acidity grew exponentially. The environmental factors contributed to the idea that the main source of nutrition would have been large animals and the, the animal foods and the fatty acids that we would have gotten would have contributed to the primary sources of brain, which leads us to point two, which is, the brain is a nutrient rich organ and it's extremely expensive to have. So as a human being, it accounts for like three to 5% of your body mass, but it consumes 20 to 25% of the actual energy. So to have a big brain, in evolutionary terms meant it had to serve a real purpose and it had to be fed a very efficient, very high fuel diet. It couldn't just be fueled on fermented uh, fiber from the gut, or maybe it could, but I believe that this argument that animal foods was a much better fuel source is really what makes sense. And there's several key essential ingredients that your brain needs to function, but keep in mind your brain is two thirds fat. So your brain is largely fat, cholesterol, neurons, and the main ingredients, the main foods that you need for a healthy brain are going to be DHA and vitamin B12. These are both molecules that you cannot get in a plant-based diet. Now, I think that you can supplement them. I think obviously there's probably some room to argue that humans might be facultative carnivores where we at times would eat fruits and vegetables because that was our origin. And so we still have some of that mechanism in our body. But to argue that an optimal high performance diet eliminates animal foods is insane. Considering that our brain is primarily made up of these fatty acids that you cannot get from plant foods. You can convert DHA from ALA, which is the plant form of that fatty acid. But the conversion rate is like something like one to 20. So you get about a 20th of what you consume if you're doing it well. And for B12, there's almost nowhere in the plant world where you can get it. Um, for most people on a vegan diet, they have to supplement B12. It is abundant in animal foods and B12 is critical. If you have a deficiency in B12, you are gonna have nerve issues, nerve damage, cognitive impairment, it plays a critical role in your nervous system. The other interesting one is vitamin A. And vitamin A in animals comes in retinol form, which is converted to retinoic acid. In plants, it's actually called beta carotene and we convert it. But this one is actually converted at a one to 20 ratio for, for most people if they're efficient at doing it. And vitamin A is not something that you can get very well from a plant food diet but it is critical, but it is critical in the brain to myelination, the blood brain barrier to neural, neural health and activity. And you need to make sure that you're getting a good amount of vitamin A. And as we all know, if you've followed some of the videos on my channel, liver is one of the best sources of vitamin A. Another unique animal nutrient that is highly concentrated in the human body is vitamin K2. You cannot get vitamin K2 from plants. You get K1, which you can convert, but it's very difficult to convert it. K2 is critical to cognitive, cognitive function, memory, and bone density. Again, K2, which comes from animal foods, not from plant foods. Again, K2 is coming only from animal foods. It does not come from plant foods. <laughs> dark meat on chicken. You can also get it in eggs. And we could go on the list here. There's actually quite a few other, other vitamins. And again, this argument is tough to hold against the idea that, hey, well, there's a ton of animals out there that their brains are made up of these same sort of chemicals and they need these same nutrients and they eat plants. So your argument doesn't make sense. The point here though, is that our, our entire digestive system is much more similar to a scavenger wolf or a canine carnivore than it is to an actual primate. If you look at the size of their, their guts and the way that they digest the food, 
they have the ability to ferment the food and generate fat from it and we don't have that in our bodies. Our guts are also anthropology, and that jives with the anthropology that we probably were these scavengers early in our evolution where we were blowing up the size of our brains. And that correlates with the anthropology and the evidence that they've generated around the experience in the environment where we became these uh, sort of scavengers that were eating, cracking open the skulls and finding the scavenger parts that the, the predators couldn't really get into right away and that the food was maybe a bit more old, not so fresh, and that in order for us to actually sustain that as a food source and actually digest it, we had to have higher acidity. So coming full circle, there's two main reasons again why I think the carnivore diet is absolutely the best diet for a human being. Um, the main one, the, the, the first one we talked about is the evolutionary factors. If you look at our bodies, we don't correlate with um, a typical animal that would consume large amounts of fiber, large amounts of fermenting to be processed and our biology and our brain correlates more from the biological perspective when the timeline lines up with when we were scavengers eating animal foods all of that sort of supports this theory that we were eating these these foods and our brains were getting bigger and they were more bio they were more available in our environment and we were generating the tools to actually get into them the second point is the nutrient profile and the fact that as a human being, when you look at us consuming plant foods, there is a conversion process in almost all of these key essential brain nutrients that you need. Vitamin B12, you can't even get it from most plants. There's almost no plants that you can get B12 from. Choline, zinc are also very hard to get in an animal, uh, non-animal food-based diet. You're also looking at things like K1, K1 has to be converted to K2. K2 you can get from animal foods, but you can't get K2 from plant foods. And one of the biggest ones, Dacosa hexanoic acid, DHA, which you only get from animals, is like one of the biggest things you need for brain function. In fact, people who have um, depression have issues with cognitive performance. This is one of the things that they've done studies on that has shown to be actually effective at treating these things is to give them DHA supplementation. So anyways, I hope that video was helpful. If you like this video, hit the like button, throw me a comment. What are your thoughts on evolution ancestry? Do you think that we actually came up as, as a species, as a carnivore, or are we more of an omnivore? And what plant foods do you think are really valuable to our diet? I'd love to hear those kind of comments. And obviously subscribe if you haven't subscribed to the channel. I've got several other videos on here about different things about the carnivore diet. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.